Hello and welcome to my 13 Horrifically Silly Days of Halloween blog series. Today my guest is Adam Thorne, local Toronto B-movie filmmaker. Adam, please introduce yourself or reintroduce yourself as I did <laughs> interview you a couple of years ago. Please tell, tell us about yourself. It really was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? Was. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, the world has just flown by. Uh, I'm Adam Thorne, uh, sometimes known as Adam Riot Thorne, depending on what events I'm holding. Uh, I make completely zero budget weird films that oddly people seem to see and like. And I also host a weird little film fest every year for other people who do the same weird things like me. Right, right. Okay, so we'll get to uh, your your festivals um, nearer the end. Uh, but right now I wanted to talk to you about a recent project of yours, or at least it's, it, it's come out on DVD uh, as a uh, double feature with another film of yours, uh, <laughs> Attack on the Snake Men. Assault on the Snake Assault, Men. Assault, excuse me, right. I'm sorry. Yeah, Assault on the Snake Men. I saw it uh, <laughs> last night uh, along with Moopit Pastor and <laughs> It was, I, I had a lot of fun. I especially enjoyed Move It Pastor, I gotta say. That one, that one spoke to me. <laughs> 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 I'm really happy that a lot of people do. Actually, I get probably most messages out of that one. I just feel weird about that because I'm in it too much. Ah. So yeah. it it doesn't it it's it's not as easy for me to watch that one. Um, gotcha. Yeah. But uh, it's that's the wonder of doing something with no budget, doing something when you are in the midst of moving and realized, oh, I haven't finished this film, so <laughs> I'm going to now film everything by myself really quickly before I move because the house that I shared at that time had just been sold and I didn't see that coming. Oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, moving back to Assault on the Snake Men. Um, mm -hmm. Now, that one took a little extra time to complete, correct? I mean, did, did COVID get in the way there a little? And uh, it, Yeah, it did. It was, I, it was one of those ones that we thought we'd do super quick. Yeah. And... Then COVID happened, and so we relaxed because we're like, well, that's not going to be that long. That, that'll, yeah. that'll get done by the summer, you know? And, um, and it didn't. No. So uh, I spent some time kind of fiddling around with it, just sort of editing it. Um, and then I blew up a hard drive and lost, like, a few of the scenes. So with, again, limited amount of people, because we didn't want to gather people together again. Yeah. We, showed up uh, just a handful of us and faked the scenes which nah, I think people think I did it on purpose because it works with my sense of humor but I, they didn't there were actually other scenes somewhere which will never be seen again oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> because of computer blow-ups etc and well, it was the concept I could have like got those people back together but I just wasn't as if I'm paying people with pizza and pop <laughs> i'm not gonna say yeah we don't know how terrible COVID is let's all 20 of us get back together again yeah no, it wasn't gonna happen so no. okay well so um where was it shot um and like i know you said zero dollars but about like ballpark how much do you feel like you spent on it honestly i think i spent the least on that one than i've ever spent on anything um mm -hmm. because we had our joke that our, our first movie under the Riot House Films um, Personal Space Invader, we did a yeah. Kickstarter and only made $666. And that's when I stopped it. And I was like, oh, that's a sign. That's what we need. Um, and then we didn't bother doing Kickstarters again after that. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a couple of people donated here and there. I mean, really, literally only a couple hundred dollars. It yeah. was um, camera we already had. Um, I'd finally just sort of learned how to use an editing program a little differently. So I was inspired to try some extra cheap tricks. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I <laughs> you want to, we'll say it costs $2,000 because <laughs> if they count time not going into work those days, but. Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> all right, all right. Now, just for the film geeks out there, what kind of camera did you shoot on? Uh, actually that one um, was, Oh, where is it? I literally had it around here. It's literally a palm quarter for that yeah. one. That's why it's even cheaper. Before, um, even on Muppet Pastor, we, for a chunk of that, we had used a, uh, a large Canon SLR that was like maybe two years old. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I was being even cheaper because I was using just this tiny little palm quarter that I have, little strap around your hand, tiny thing. Mm. Um, I don't even, I can't even think what brand it is, but it, it's it's super, super cheap, um, which is a concept that I could easily quickly upload the, the footage and do digital things to it without having to worry about my terrible computer slow lagging. So it was to actually make on purpose to make the files as slow as possible. Right. Because again, that was going to be part of the aesthetic. It was going to be part of the gag. Um, and again, luckily people got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's, it's quite clear to me anyway, that like, that's what you were going for. The costumes and the acting make, make it clear, you know, yeah. as, like, what, what you're doing. Um, and <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, the film's a lot of fun. The snake men vary from like guy with weird bag sort of thing over his head <laughs> to people with just these long teeth. Uh, Hideous is wearing underwear on his head. Underwear? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what was that supposed to? <laughs> it, he was supposed to be like, like um, he's he's supposed to, he's called hideous. I only mentioned it at one point, so he's supposed to be really ugly, evidently. So okay. it's kind of like he's wearing the bag over his head, like the Elephant Man. But yeah. to me, it was like it's even funnier if it's just underwear. It's just these oversized gray underwear. Yeah. Which, okay. At first, people won't notice, and then later they'll be like, "Oh wait, his nose is sticking through the front of the underwear." Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And then other snake men just have little bits of green on them here and there. And then the queen was probably the most involved, I guess, or uh, well, one of anyway, uh, like with her Medusa hair and stuff. Yeah. And she's like at least kind of like a shiny green tint over her for her makeup and that. Cause yeah. She's the queen, so she wants to look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So, oh, yeah. What did you edit with, if I might? Uh, literally, again, for anyone who wants to do things for free and for nothing, um, I, I dabbled in using Final Cut Pro, but I'm, yeah. again, not that good. And the other, I would use Final Cut Pro over the guidance of friends with the last projects. But this one, I literally found a free program that's called, um, oh, hang on one second, because I, I think if it's open or one, because no one ever uses this. <laughs> um, oh, it's just called open shot and okay. the reason for uh, using it is it's the only like free program that lets you use unlimited editing tracks so you can do green screen and really practice and i because i never used green screen stuff before right. but that let me really practice it by having like layers and layers and layers which of course because i don't really know what i'm doing <laughs> did cause some weird issues but if, as for anyone who just wants to practice it who's never done green screen stuff before it's free online completely. It doesn't do any uh, limiting of your time. It doesn't do any like um, watermark on it. So it's really, it's not a professional program in any way, but it's a really great program to want to learn how to do that. A lot of people are doing YouTube videos right now who want to do yeah. learn how to do that for the first time. I really actually recommend it because it's so dumbed down. And so right. even an idiot like me can use it. Got any stories for me about Attack of the Snake Man? Anything interesting happen or? For real B movie fans, like I don't know if you'll you'll know this or get it, um, but Toronto fans of no budget films will get kind of a kick out of this. There's a scene where the character with the underwear that we talked about, hideous, uh, gets killed. His death spoiler, his death scene. Um, and when I brought that home to to edit it, we put on a movie called Wicked World in the background with me and a friend hanging out, uh, which is made by a guy called Barry J. Gillis. That's an infamous just north of toronto filmmaker who made a film called things uh, um things is known as like one of those impossible to watch bad movies that like bad movie fans who want to like test themselves really put it out there yeah. and as we're watching wicked world we realize in the middle of that film he has a death scene that takes place in the exact same space and we shot it almost on the same angle we're like no those trees look all exactly the same and then we just sort of lay up the shots and we're like Oh, it is in the same place. Somehow he must have lived in the same area at the same point because that movie was made like almost 20 years ago. And uh, the fact that we were watching it as we were editing that scene was like this. It's not like I wanted to really do free advertising for Barry J. Gillis, but at the same point, fans of the stuff and the, the schlock that I like do know who he is. And it, it really hit home. We're like, oh, now I know what kind of a person I am that I think in the same way that he does. <laughs> 
woo <laughs> synchronicity. <laughs> Which was was great for that. I mean, it, it again was um, making a film that you're just making for fun with your friends, and these moments where you find I, again comparing myself to to that filmmaker is not making me a legit filmmaker in any way. But I think of like the very first day we filmed, we were just filming out in an alley behind Eyesore Cinema, um, <laughs> and I had put a message on their page saying if anyone wants to show up as an extra and get green stickers on their teeth or, and their face and fake little teeth put in show up and these four college kids showed up who we'd never met I don't know if they'd ever been to the store before and they said their professor told them that so obviously their professor looked on the eyesore page and said if you guys are bored and you want acting uh, practice go to uh go down to eyesore cinema and go to this we've still not figured out who their professor is and so I don't know if we know him or not, but um, it was this really awkward moment where I had to like explain to them. So, you know, this is just us filming on a palm quarter and is kind of just for fun. And they were like, oh, well, good. That puts all the pressure off it. Like they had an almost nervousness. And then afterwards, immediately they didn't, which um, which led to the fact that if you're going to do these kind of films, hopefully you got to make it fun. And, and I think we all did. It sounds like they had a lot of fun. We've kept in touch since then. So it's a fun way to meet interesting weird strangers <laughs> the um the movie is out now on the company sov horror uh sovhorror.com um that's where you order all their weird films mm -hmm. uh, they only do well it's not true for all of them but the film for my film it's only under a two months lease so i'm not sure when you're going to post this but it will almost be over by that point oh okay october um, so it will be over at that oh oh yeah if this goes in october yes absolutely yes yeah. it will be over it, it goes at the end of next month uh -huh. um for okay. which is we're now we're now in the summer right now um <laughs> so yeah so it won't be available anymore at that point okay. um what we'll do with it in the future i have some plans but i until uh, we've figured out what, when that's over the sale with sov horror is done um the reason that i i bugged them to release it i sent them my films and said hey i'll make you the cheapest deal whatever i think it'd just be fun for you guys to release it because they're an independent company they're a guy in his basically his back his basement doing doing that um but he released like he has a couple of films that he releases every month and then he has one title that only goes for a couple of months each and then ends and is replaced by another. He, he has a sub-label called The Basement Films, um, yeah. which are like sort of the worst of the worst, but on, but on purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, the I'm the second film to be released as Basement Films. The one before it, which was um, released by, it was two short films, about an hour each, so like mine, um, by a guy called uh, Josh Squire. I've never met Josh, but I've been a fan of Josh's for like 15 years. And these were just films he made on the side that he never released. And he gave basically to SOV Horror to do for that short label. So that's when I was like, oh, do I, if, if I can be the next release on that, that's, I don't care if I see any money from it. I don't care if it sells or not. Yeah. I just feel like I'm part of the, like the weird bad movie club now. Yeah. Um, and, and it has kind of worked with that. It's been, the responses have been great. They have their replacement for me um, without doing any free, much more free advertising. You guys can look it up on SOVHorror.com. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be coming out to the end of June. So by the time this is out, the replacement will already be there. Um, and I've seen it. I've seen the events of it, and I feel not worthy. <laughs> it's it's a, it's an excellent, excellent, weird, gross film called Specimen Six, and um, it, I I can't recommend it enough. It's um, I'm I can't wait till what happens at the end of the year for them because all of those filmmakers are now kind of keeping in touch, even that we've never met and not through that label, but we've been talking online and doing these things, and um, it's fun to be part of this new group. Yeah. I bet. Wow, very cool. Thank you for all of that info. And uh, let's, but let's continue to talk about the double feature that <laughs> won't be there anymore by the time this is out, but still. Uh, uh, Movie Pastor, when did you make that? I guess probably about three years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because now I saw the Snake Man's been like two years. So we were doing like a film every year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, I'd usually find some sort of downtime almost every summer and then usually find again some sort of downtime at the beginning of winter around Christmas so I could edit the film. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like a, a pattern for me, which has been really weird that we haven't been able to do anything again with that. I've got a script. I, we wrote, me and a friend kind of 
I, script is a big word for us, but to make it better, we just we made two we really liked. We we're like, okay, now we're set. So when COVID's over, we're gonna get to work. But now we're still waiting. So I've edited the two scripts into one. And now I think it's like, ooh, now we have a real movie. So <laughs> this like excitement to get back going says, yeah, Muppet Master was at least three and a half years ago. And it's probably been about two years now since Snake Man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I did enjoy some of the lines in particular in Muppet Master and your, your interesting accent. <laughs> <laughs> My accent totally made to uh, to bother my father. Um, my my dad doesn't have a Scottish accent, but he's born in Scotland, um, so <laughs> he he likes to put one on sometimes, and he doesn't realize how bad his is because oh, okay. <laughs> he hasn't lived there since he was eight. So like he doesn't have that accent at all. My grandparents did and like we have family that does but he every so often gets in the mode and puts it on and it's so fake and he doesn't believe that so <laughs> the, hence why mine is was very free to change as the movie goes on that yeah, it would yeah. just, to add to his mystery <laughs> mm -hmm. yes indeed and of course i i love um exorcism type uh themes <laughs> and stuff like that and and puppets so this was great for all of that is this like a, a puppet master we change the first letters a little bit on those yeah two? absolutely okay. everything I, I first make comes from a pun personal space invader was a joke off the space invader video game and then thought that makes it weird and touchy yeah. and then <laughs> Muppet pastor sounds like a drunk person possibly a drunk person with a scottish accent said puppet master yeah um and say that's how uh, that's how my dad would say Muppets, Muppets, but um, it's like a very Canadian, very Scottish accent together. Mm -hmm. um, and then Assault on Snake Man was the same thing we do in all of our films, where every scene, I, I enjoyed that I do it subtly because people don't usually get it till they watch it the second or third time. Every scene is a calling to some other sort of bad movie, and Assault on Snake Man just mixes with so many 1970s. I mean, like Assault, uh, Assault on Precinct 13 um, was, I think, where the basis was. That someone originally had pitched to me when I said I came up with that the idea of this Snake Man having a base and something attacking it, and so someone said, "Are you going to write it like Assault on Precinct 13?" And I was like, "I wish," which is as far as I got in writing it that way was the title, <laughs> and then I just <laughs> moved on. But uh, yeah, everything comes with hanging around with friends, and someone makes a joke, and then I make a joke that no one gets, and I'm like that's the one if that's the joke that stumps everybody that's going to be the title for the film and going to be probably the premise too okay cool and the three puppets in it well at least the one i noticed in particular had similarities to the puppet master puppets uh, a little bit i'm just thinking of the skull guy a little oh, like oh well yeah i guess it kind of does yeah <laughs> it kind of looks like blade a bit yeah yeah yeah, yeah and, but... and he's sort of like the main one too which mm -hmm. like puppet master has that sort of unspoken thing that like for some reason blade is i mean he doesn't really do anything more than the other ones but as fans of that genre everyone's like yeah that the the skull faced one in all black he's the leader right and like yeah. okay well, he sure. stands out i guess you know yeah he yeah. does um he's my favorite too but um <laughs> yeah i'm definitely a fan of, of all that stuff which there's no denying that's where i'm getting it from little <laughs> creature films are fun regardless like i think when it comes to like that kind of genre um critters is like the first movie i can remember seeing um that just old enough to be able to see that and thinking like i like i get this i like you there's part of you that's like wait they can't possibly be that dangerous and then all of a sudden there's a scene where they really are that dangerous and you're like oh wow that that's that's exciting and a surprise mm -hmm. so it's a uh, it, you can play off humor and be gross horror at the same time it's it, your audience if your audience is accepting enough to watch a movie where puppets or little monsters are killing people you know you've got room to work with something. yeah for sure I don't know. They make it more fun for me. I, I like just I just love and the and the uh, purple puppet felt like reminded me a little of uh, obviously not on, not on purpose in this case, but uh, puppet killer Simon the the yeah the pink puppet in that. I was really uh, um, we were both at the screening for that at the yes. at the festival. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't know anything about that film and someone messaged me saying you have to come to it tonight like mm. on that night um and then when I saw it I was like oh that's why and they're yeah. like yeah like it, <laughs> it you, you totally designed the same which uh Lisa from uh Public Killer and I have talked since then and like yep. I've kind of 
learn where her head goes with and uh and she's a, a really creative uh, inspirational person so I'm like i i'm i'm glad the coincidence could exist there um yeah, totally. but that puppet's not named we always meant he had a name but we never say it in the movie we always called him gnarly yeah. um yeah like like cowabunga dude gnarly but also oh, sounds yeah. like he was chewed on so um yeah, yeah, yeah. But he will return. Um, he, well, he survived. Yes, he's the one that survives. Yes, <laughs> yeah. which I mean doesn't make any sense when it explains the reason of why they're defeated. But um, <laughs> but yeah. but he will be back. Um, will he be directly? Will it make sense? Will it be connected to Muppet Pastor? Not really. Okay. But that's something I like to do with all my films that I can do callbacks. And have someone who's seen it for the first time ask, what does that mean? And that gives me an excuse to open up a conversation and go, oh, well, here are my other movies. <laughs> right, right. So, so Gnarly <laughs> will return in the project that I, I've not uh, solidified the name on yet. We, the working title for the next uh, project is the Amityville Outhouse. No. So. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Amityville Outhouse. <laughs> nice. It, it, had, um, it had two two working titles, Amityville Outhouse and the other story that we've now matched together was originally called The Gabagool, which was just from watching Sopranos when they would say Capicola, they'd say Gabagula. And so we're like making a meat monster who's a ghost. So he's the Gabagool. Okay. And my, my project with that, that'll still happen in some form or another. The only thing that I know for sure that will stay is I'm working on doing my own music for it with like like a band so that everything sounds like a Ramones ripoff because the Yo nice. Gabba Gabba thing like Gabba Gabba that they would say so uh again to be these weird little winks to like the 70s that people won't get but like maybe it's what I, I love when I tell a joke and someone sees it and then two days later they get it and they're like oh hey I got the reference you were making there and I'm like ah, I love that it, it stuck with you enough that you knew there was a reference but you didn't quite know what it was <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Okay. Okay. Now to make sure I get to other stuff here. Oh, any fun stories before we move on from Muppet Pastor? Anything in particular that happened there that uh, you wanted to share during production? Well, the great thing with that was uh, with, with Muppet Pastor is we purposely kept it small because mm -hmm. I knew when that started, again, the plan for that was to do it really, really quick. That's why we didn't have much of a cast. And then the tragedy hit my personal life and I had to like even do it even quicker, um, mm -hmm. which was made it a fun experience. Um, <laughs> the One of the great things is um, the young priest, Adrian, who's in that. Um, he's not in any of my other projects. He's always been around. Um, Adrian's like walked in. He's just showed up at days we were filming and not known. Right. We had nothing for him to do, so we held a camera in a couple other films. Okay. And I was like, Adrian, you're actually an actor. You should show up and, and do something. So we did that. As soon as we finished those scenes, he um, moved off to, to Thailand for a year. Wow. So there was no chance of reshooting that. Um, so he's back now, and, uh, and he was back before COVID, but I mean, we were done by that point but we had it all done so by the time i had shown the movie he hadn't even come back in the country yet um but it was great that i finally got to, to use him since he's been a, a friend in, in that kind of genre for a long time he um he's now a prolific comic book writer writing the recent captain canuck future of comic books so he's cool. uh he's a, a geek for life uh, which he also had has he makes short films that are really dramatic and really like serious so he's oh, yeah. he's not that kind of he's he's similar to me in every way but the stuff he makes is not similar at all which is great because we get to sit and brainstorm and he puts a different spin on it um we w i went to a really fancy gala that was playing short film festivals that he was up for an award on it and i just kept telling everybody that he's in a movie i made called movement pastor and it's his only topless scene because we make him take his shirt off <laughs> and his his family were there and everyone was really dressed up for it it was one of those kind of the film festival where they gave you just free champagne glasses or watching like literally that kind of thing and that's all i would talk about to people and we're, <laughs> we're thinking the whole time like what weird guy did you bring with you adrian <laughs> so, but it's it's great to to cross minds with people like that but uh yeah. he, he's he's a guy you're gonna see in a lot more stuff i if I don't get him dragged into the new one, I am failing as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, sounds good. Uh, okay, so tell me why uh, the 
B movie, bad movie, we'll say genre. Uh, why is that your thing? I mean, I, I I answer differently every time. Like I've written a couple of cheap books and I've done mm -hmm. lots of videos and I've been in other people's podcasts and that and, and talked about that. Um, the most recent time someone asked me that, I thought about it. I think about what I was as a kid. Yeah. Growing up as a kid in the 80s, watching 80s cartoons where you need this like you're just seeing flashy weirdness. You're just seeing like colorful collectible things or weird characters. There's no real background to any of those characters. There's like huge holes in the plot all the time. So you spend your whole time as a kid filling in those holes. You're like, okay, I'm going to watch a cartoon called Turbo Teen where a kid transforms into a car and his friends drive him around to fight crime against a giant muscle truck. And, and there's no logic for it. Nothing makes sense, but it's so colorful and fun. You want to enjoy it. So as a child, the whole time if someone was to say that cartoon's stupid why did you watch that i'd have an answer for it i'd have like well i'm sure this is why this happens i'm sure this is why he is changes into the car then i'm sure this is why he chose that kind of a car to turn into blah 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 blah. Right. so my brain got into this mentality and then i got older and then as i turned into a teenager listening to heavy metal music and wanting that imagery i'd find horror movies you'd see the basic horror movies that were out there and then I'd be like, yeah, everybody talks about those. Let's find something people don't know. And then I discovered that genre of like super, super low budget horror movies and comedies that that are made by, I don't want to say 80s kids because I'm sure kids from any generation could do that. Oh, but yeah. kids that kind of grew up in that mentality because you were you spent your whole time excusing your geekiness, excusing these dumb cartoons and now I could easily do the same thing to these movies. There's other people who didn't grow up like that would watch this type of bad movie, as I do the air quotes, and they'd be like, well, that movie doesn't make sense. Like, why did that character do that? Why does, when that girl runs away from the chainsaw maniac, why does she always fall over? And why does she then go back into the cabin and say, is anybody there? <laughs> Tropes. I could, I could, yeah, I could write you a million excuses for why they do that. Sure, you're right. They don't make sense. I know that. But I feel very skilled in in coming up with excuses for it. And it's like a challenge. So if I'm going to, it's a challenge that's cheap. And so it's, it's by, um, if I ruin it, I don't feel so bad. I, I've, never, I've never scrapped a movie, but I am also at that mentality where I'm like, okay, we're originally doing this for fun. We're doing this with the expectation it won't be seen. Um, and, uh, but we always do release them. We at least get them seen. Mm -hmm. Both of the Muppet Pastors are on Blu-ray from Gold Ninja Video. SOV Horror has um, my other two. So, I mean, we're, we never give up on them. But I always have that safety mechanism saying, this isn't that big a deal. I'm not working with someone's big investment. I'm not <laughs> working. These are friends who I'm not going to ruin my friendship with them. If there's ever a moment when filming, when we get in like an argument, um, which definitely has happened, didn't really happen in the last couple of films, but like early on, there was moments where we all of a sudden got into it. We took it really seriously. <laughs> and I had this ability to just like pull it back where we're like, okay, no, let's go out for lunch and let's just eat and drink and talk about this because we're not making the next, we're, we're not even making an early Scorsese film but that one day he will get picked up and become the famous Scorsese. We're not even doing that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and as long as people keep laughing, and as long as people, um, one of the best parts are finding people who do pick at it. I'll find one or two people who make a comment online. We got in like a big joke with some of the fans and some of the cast members when uh, SV Horror posted a YouTube trailer and someone said, you guys release a lot of cheap films. This is too cheap. I don't think you should charge money for this. This should just be a YouTube video. And Obviously, the guy hadn't seen it, but a lot of the fans and cast members made comments to the guy. I was like, oh, no, we're going to get into a fight. This is going to be a bad thing. I don't want to do that. But they didn't. Everyone's got a really good sense of humor about it because, again, they get why this is. They know it's not that serious. And then that guy even messaged back and goes, well, you know, it's really, really funny. And I was like, then good enough. Like okay, that's, yeah. that, that's that's all I need. Um, I, I don't need his 10 bucks from it, but uh, evidently somebody did because I think he bought it. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've heard back from them that I ended up doing it. So 
I guess I win. I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and there doesn't really have to be a winner either. No, and no, never did have to be. So it's only it, every, when something like that happens, it's an incredible bonus. If someone posted online and said, this stinks, I would also, again, because of that bad cartoon and B-movie logic, I could also have a spin on how to make that great too. Yeah. I, my real dream, I've done it fakely on one of my releases. Um, and a lot of movies have been doing it fake too they've been doing covers that have these purposely terrible yeah, right. quotes on them and i'm like yeah. oh those aren't even actual quotes because if your movie's really that bad people just don't say anything mm -hmm. um but i would love to have someone say this is the worst thing i've ever seen right. um and use it yeah, and use it yeah. and and put that right on the cover yeah. um but i haven't hit that yet i am i'm jealous of a couple of fans i and uh I, I know I'm a close friend to, well, not close friend. That's a big word to say, but I have a friend that I talk to regularly uh, mm -hmm. who released a film who, again, I'm not going to free advertising for him right now, but um, they, if they watch, they know what, the, what I'm talking about where they released a movie. Um, it got released worldwide. It has a, an amazing Japanese poster and cover for it. Um, and if you Google that movie, and or look up on YouTube and and wonderful that my friend doesn't care that I I don't know how I would have dealt with this. Okay. Um, what and everywhere you go, everyone's first comment is this is the worst thing I've seen. This movie shouldn't exist. Like <laughs> like something has affected them. Something came out of the screen and insulted them and slapped their family. And, and it was like, they felt the need. They had to save people by saying, do not watch this. Yeah. And at first I became like defensive, defensive for him. So I would be on these message boards going, what are you talking about? It's funny. Come on. You've never seen it in a, like we saw it in a theater and it was great. Everyone laughed about it. Sure. It's cheap. Sure. Whatever. Um, and then, but then I've talked to the director of it and he's like, bah. It was, <laughs> that was never important. And I'm like, are you lying? Like, how do you not care? But then eventually it started to, to tumble roll and I, I, okay, I will say the title. The movie's called Ouija Shark. Just Google Ouija <laughs> Shark. And the first thing that comes up is gonna be just people saying they lividly hate this movie. But now it's gone to this level that that's, fantastic yeah. that it's really funny and for a movie that they were like they were going to throw away they're like no i'm going to market this more i'm going to post yeah. this more i'm going to do i'm going to screen it in more places and it's it's like this negativeness is feeding them and i haven't gone there yet but if i do i look really forward to it <laughs> it's excellent and all like good ways to look at that because I mean it when you're making that kind of movie first of all people shouldn't be expecting what they're expecting I think with uh their expectations are a little off I think when they're checking out a movie called Ouija Shark and they're expecting yeah. that like what what do you think you're getting um except for a funny fun silly you know good time kind of thing right and it's well to be honest that movie's not even very funny <laughs> Oh, okay. Hmm. I but, mean, it's supposed to be, but it, that's why it's great to me because it fails on that level too. Well, that can be which great is as like, well, and that can be funny. And it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel, <laughs> and, and that's the thing that a lot of B-movie fans are missing out at, at COVID right now. Like I love all these people who are doing all their live streamings. I'm doing them too. I kind of gave up for a bit and then I got back into it, um, premiering f their own films. And you know, you, you want to watch your big movies that you can still download at home as opposed to going to the theater. Uh, knock on wood that slowly that's getting back mm -hmm. but for the last 12 13 months a lot of no budget indie films have been released but only directly to home um you, you sure they were only going to be ever to home because they were small movies or small independent movies but before you'd watch them at like midnight with a bunch of friends together you piled the table up with nachos and uh and got a good belly laugh out of it no matter what but now there's people watching it by themselves in front of their computer and you're and you if you do that you spend your whole time picking it apart trying to say like hmm i found the problem here yes. and you realized a year and a half ago if you did that with a bunch of friends you didn't think like that no. you could have watched ouija shark and been like oh man, that's so funny that that person flubbed the line and they didn't catch it and they kept it in the film. 
as opposed to the person who watched it at home on a little screen who was like, better write that down, mm -hmm. better make a note. Yes. They flubbed that line. That person doesn't know how to edit. Let's make a point online to say that they don't know how to edit when who cares? Yeah. <laughs> like it, you wouldn't have normally cared. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so you were, I, it's going to be a while till people get into those comfort zones again. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's going to be, that's what I'm excited to get another one out because if I get another one out happens at the end of the year, maybe people in, in January next year start to see it. I feel like people are going to be ready for just stupid fun again. And they're going to not just, not just ready for it, but they're going to be like really wanting it. Yeah. So, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's, um, I think these guys who had released stuff in the last two years, went through a wave of and i've done it with some of the stuff i've tried to release and try to get out in the last two years but um this bit of disappointment but i think the the no budget world's gonna have uh another another wave very soon that i think there's there's you're gonna see a lot of people being like well i was really bored over the last two years so i've been writing down these silly things i don't think anyone's gonna want to produce this but i've been writing it for the whole period of covid I gotta make it happen. Mm -hmm. I have to make this happen now, no matter what. And I'm excited to to look through what uh, what weird guys are gonna weird guys and girls that are making these films, um, and I can just enjoy it. Like, uh, sure, sure, there's part of me that's gonna make fun of it, but I wouldn't bother making fun of it if I didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think you're right. I think there will be uh, some sort of explosion of of uh, creativity, you could say like high-end creativity and then <laughs> low-end yeah. creativity. Well, people, I mean, at the same time, I mean, that was the first time of me doing green screen stuff with Snake Man. There's a good and a bad that people really discovered what green screen can do. Um, there are lots of great YouTube videos where people can be like in the same movie with each other. There's mm -hmm. a couple of movies that came out. Um, there's one I recently saw called, oh man, it's from the same person that did Ouija Shark. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it, it, TNT Kong, which is like a fake King Kong movie, yeah. and everybody edited themselves into it. Um, they just filmed the, the monkey stuff from a project they never finished ages ago and said, hey, friends and family and fans, edit yourself into this film um, and let's finish this movie and release it as a, as a COVID movie. And it, was like, it was really inspirational for people. People were like enjoying it. Then I started noticing everyone's doing it. I'm like, oh no, they like <laughs> superimpose your friends into your movie is the new Blair Witch. It's the new found footage film. Yeah. I'm like, ah, I, I, it's funny now, but I know in 2022, when people don't have much of an excuse, they're still going to be doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be seeing so many of them because I am addicted and, and a sadist and will still watch them. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I'm going to be banging my head on the table going, <laughs> okay, the joke's over. You don't need to do this. But. People always take the joke too far for too long, though. It is like, or, or the, the trend that they just latch on to. They will not let go right away. Well, I thought it would be the end of seeing paranormal activity ripoffs, and they are still making them today. Yeah. There will still be many of them to come. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, especially in the horror fan genre. The horror fan genre, they love, I don't know if they love predictability, but it's almost like they're just asking for it. They're asking for their fans to say, make something original. Okay, I'll make something original. Chooses not to make something original. It, it's just a thing that happens. Like mm. We're, our horror fans hate remakes the most, yet they make remakes the most. Yeah. It, it's, we like comfort zone. So we like to know who Freddy is, even mm. that we want to be surprised, but we're not going to be because we know this. We're we're too smart for our own good. We're we're too nerdy. Or or okay. we're like yeah. We're like oh, look how smart I'm being. And like what by referencing five movies from the '80s that all your friends already saw. Like mm, I get it, which I am completely guilty of. Yes. But so it's very hypocritical for me to complain about it. I oh. just feel like if people aren't aware of that, if I'm always mind boggled when people are shocked by that. <laughs> that you could spend 20 minutes on the internet writing a huge article about how Hatchet 4 isn't original and creative. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I, and because I will watch Hatchet 4 yeah. knowing that it's not, knowing that I'm going to groan at it, yeah. but I do that because I like it. And mm. so I'm, but it, and I don't expect other people to necessarily. Like, if someone came up to me and said, oh, you know, I don't like cheesy jokes and I don't like monsters uh like okay great like I get it you don't have to watch that yeah. but um uh, 
hence why I do make movies really for myself. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best reason to do it though, really. I mean, yeah. I think with writing and filmmaking, um, yeah, that's just, you, you, you do what you like, what you like to see and what you like best and what you want to do. I, I'm hating the writing process of that's why I the, the what I'm doing now I've mashed two scripts together because with not being able to film it right away and knowing that I survive off cheesy jokes and and gags um you know there's there are one or two fart jokes in that script which were really funny 20 20 weeks ago <laughs> and they're not funny anymore to me so I'm uh, like oh did I just realize that it's not funny or is it because I've read that part of the script for like three months um i don't know anymore part of it for sure at least if not the entire thing like you you just two in you you yeah yeah and there's only i mean again people who love this kind of stuff i wouldn't be surprised if studies showed that a lot of us suffered from a lot of adhd um (laughs) we don't have a huge um attention span uh we want things thrown out at us we want <laughs> we want candy in our film kind of thing you know we, we want it to be um odd we want it to to make us think at times but um we're also that way with making them the what people who make these films so if it takes us too long about three quarters into the progress you're like okay i want to go on to that new idea i had yeah like i've got another idea let's move on let's get it done yeah which which will make your film suffer so if you're not my only advice to people who make stuff like this i don't understand guys like like me who made these kind of films who've made them two hours long i'm just like what you why are you making the justice league snyder cut out of your your three thousand dollar you know paper mache monster movie um and sometimes you think like okay could have just done better with editing but other times you're like no no you wrote that to be two hours long that is that is what you wanted (laughs) and and i I, maybe it's just me but i don't think it is i I don't think it's just me i think guys who like these kind of films there's a point when you're like crazy paper by shape monster that's really funny 30 40 50 minutes later not so funny anymore (laughs) so yeah 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 but we'll see. I mean, I, I love that people are willing to do what they want to do. And when they can, they have that freedom, that's being cheap gives you an amazing freedom. Yes. 